Hey everyone, today is November 20th and we were here last week checking out this beaver swamp and we discovered the beavers have come back after the whole summer being gone, after being trapped, we got new ones. This road is an absolute mess today. Certain areas it's sheer ice. Certain areas like right here is mud from the sun melting it. Every shaded part is really slippery. And the other places actually are slippery too because of the mud. You see, as soon as we make it into the shadow, the shadow right here, it's sheer ice. So this pond, I'm thinking defrosted a bit this week. Then it refroze because we had a very warm day after I drained it and now it's gonna be cold for the foreseeable future. Might even get up to eight inches of snow later this week. So I'm gonna get out right now and show you guys this. So if everyone remembers, I was here last week. And we went for a walk in here. The beavers have created a brand new massive swamp which eventually might make its way up to the road, but it's gonna take some time because it's a huge dam they'll have to bring up. Right here, we got a whole bunch of mud forming because it's not completely compacted where the brand new pipe is. They just gotta send the grader a few times and it should be okay. Right here, um, where's the culvert pipe? That is fine. It's silting up though, it's having a problem. Either it's angled wrong, or maybe there's a little bit of crush in there because it is a plastic pipe. Yeah, that shouldn't be silting up. That end is definitely lower than this end, so that's the problem there. So right here, you see this water sitting? This is actually held up by a beaver pond. Through here, it's all elevated. There's like a 70-foot beaver dam in there I showed last week. Now the beaver swamp is actually freezing up. So in here, there's at least, I would say, an acre and a half. I didn't explore the full extent. It may be much bigger than I expect. But the beavers have a brand new swamp in here. Actually, right here is a good angle of it, too. See all this ice in here? This is all a beaver pond. It's huge. This whole section of woods is flooded. So there'll be a lot of trees dying out there next year. Wasn't like that, only, I think I checked this about two months ago. I didn't check it that much this summer because they got relocated after, we must have unclogged it six times in the spring. Awesome unclogings. Yeah, actually look at this. The water right here is all backed up because of a giant beaver swamp down there here. If I can shade the sun a little, you can see how far the ice goes. If you look straight ahead into here, that's all flooded. I'd say certain areas it is as deep as maybe three and a half feet. Not that deep. This far north, this pond could freeze almost solid. So they don't have a lot of space to work with. Right here's all the debris from our previous unclogging's the excavator did push a little bit of it over yeah I just saw a squirrel run across the nod down tree right here around this corner if you can tell this is all sheer ice in the shaded areas right around the corner where the sun's coming out has melted into mud over here the pond has completely drawed down refroze with the bathtub ring around it that means the beavers can't do absolutely anything about it until the spring. We drained this down about a foot or so last week. Is there anything left? Nope. There's a little bit of current in there, but by the looks of it, literally, if the beavers make their dam, I'd say four, maybe six inches taller, it'll be level coming in here. So pretty soon, they're going to be causing a problem for this culvert pipe. So every time we unclog it, it's usually... There's a lot of water beetles in here swimming around. Usually when we unclog this, I just compromise it, and the entire dam pushes out on the other side. It's why there's debris all over the bank. If the beavers make their pond only a foot higher, we're going to have issues unclogging it that way, making the job... It's way more difficult because we actually manually have to move every piece out of there ourselves. So, 
if this pipe ever completely gets clogged, it will take out the road here. Two years ago, this was a problem. They trapped and relocated. Beaver issue went away for about 18 months, came back this spring, huge issues for a few months. Then they trapped them, then they came back this fall. So they had to completely rebuild the road here back two springs ago. But if we look in the woods, we can still see all the silt and sediment that got pushed out of here. Oh wow, that beaver pond is big. I think I can even see it over here. Well, this is a definite animal trail coming right on down here. No, I think it might just be an opening with snow. Never mind. But right here you can see, see the rapids or the erosion where there would have been rapids right here. Water was gushing through here really fast back when the beavers clogged the pipe up because this is the place. Yeah, right here, this is all pieces of the road that got washed out. Can't see it great with the, with the snow, but there's a ton of sand here. Yeah, the entire road got pushed down here. Woo, a bird. Okay, so this is not related to the beaver pond. This is just an opening. It's like a bowl in here. This must have all been flooded. This is remnants of the logging company. I never actually walked down here. Nope. Just clearings and little trails all over the place from logging equipment coming in here. Yeah, these are old log skid trails. Straight up through here, you can tell. Down through here. Right here, you can tell a ton of water sometimes gushes. I doubt there's a culvert pipe, no. There's not. Maybe the ground just slipped. I don't actually see, oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, now I see how this is, came to be. You can tell this area here pushed out. That was a lot of water rushing through here. Look at the cavity it carved out. If I got down there, I'd be up to my chest. So it looks like when the road washed out, it must have gone in here, filled up this entire bowl. Then it came up here, dribbling over, this makeshift road, and that's how that came to be. So for water to be flowing over this road, this entire pit had to have filled up with water, maybe 12 feet deep. So this is a log skid trail. Big rigs I don't think ever drove here. Just look at the big rocks in the road. They just had to make sort of a road for extremely rugged equipment just to drag the road the uh, drag the logs out to the road just a log skid trail so for water to be coming up over this and eroding all that this entire pit here was filled with water because of it and the reason a lot of trees might not be growing here maybe this is typically filled with water during wet times Next time we're out here after a bunch of rain or the spring thaw, we'll see if this fills up. So down inside here, looking up at the road, maybe a better estimate would be 8 feet of water, not 12. I'd say 8 feet, because that road there is definitely above my head a bit. So I do think this fills with water. I'm seeing a lot of sediment and sand left in here that got pushed down from the road. Honestly, a lot less than I would have thought there'd be from that road getting taken out. And it's not like the road got taken out to an extreme degree. You could still pass through it. It was just extremely rutted. But this was interesting to see where the water went. And eventually, I'm sure it somehow makes its way back around. Ooh. Not the best way to come back up here. I'm just coming the way the water went. So that is the reason why culverts have to be kept unclogged. People always say how much environmental damage it's causing by removing the beaver dam. But 
how much environmental damage you think it causes when the road pushes out into the woods. So you can tell all up in here is typically flooded pretty close to the road because of the beavers. This is all usually underwater. So the importance of a beaver pond is that's a lot of water, especially when this is filled up where they want it. Heavy, pushing down into the aquifers, recharging groundwater, keeping the forest around it alive and healthy. After a long dry summer, the beaver pond will be down a lot, below capacity. After a drought, after a hot dry summer, that conditions usually end in a drought. I mean, it usually ends in flooding rain. All these empty or semi-empty beaver ponds now act as retention, holding back the water, preventing downstream flooding. That's the purpose of beavers in the environment. You can tell by all these scrape marks here. On the ice, tons of wind has been blasting through there. It's kind of cool how uneven it is, the snow. But those areas were obviously wet before the snow stopped falling. Then it froze over afterwards. So, taking a look at it, when we drained it down with a little ice last week, it cracked around the edges, and I'm not seeing that anymore. So I believe most or all the ice melted and refroze. It's pretty chilly out. We're just getting back into seasonal, seasonable temps. This year and last year, it didn't start snowing until pretty late. But I remember last year, we didn't get a big snowstorm until the end of December out on the logging roads. I was unclogging things with half a foot of ice on them, but yet no snow. That was actually kind of nice, being able to easily access these places without the snow. But it was actually cool to see everything frozen over at the same time. You hear that? There's an angry red squirrel over here. The squirrels are always angry out in the woods because they don't see humans often. They're not used to us. Here's the old beaver deceiver that used to be jammed in that culvert. Beaver deceiver lets the water in slowly so the beavers don't notice it. The sound of moving water and the current of water is what attracts them over to unblock it. But if you can muffle that with a beaver deceiver, trick them into not knowing how the water is getting through they won't touch it but a beaver deceiver doesn't work for long and they outsmart it after a while this is not even most of it the screen on the end of it's missing the T is missing someone took a bunch of it and I doubt the logging company took it because it and reused it because it was damaged unfortunately plastic pipes they just usually leave them out here to decay in the Sun and turn into the microplastics there's no issue with the metal pipes rusting away, but there is with these, so I believe someone probably stole it to maybe cut parts out of it, because I don't see why else they would have taken it. Alright, so we're about to hit the road again. Just wanted to come out here and confirm that thing is not clogged before winter, because this road, I'm not sure if they're going to plow it this year. They are working on it now, so the chances of that are good. But otherwise, it'll be a snowmobile trail that won't be accessible. So I just wanted to make sure that pipe was unclogged. I don't think the beavers are going to reclog it. They can't reclog it until the water's open again because they use the water to float over all their materials, the bulk of their materials. When they start a beaver swamp, it's usually a creek without a pond. And they'll have to use small de debris to get the water up. Once the water's up, they can get over bigger debris so they don't have to carry it. They can float over things that weigh many times more than them. And eventually they'll even ex they'll excavate little channels and canals deeper into the woods. So they have easy access to float everything back. So we're going to get back on the road down a little bit. So the beavers used to live right up on in here. There's another beaver swamp up here, which is currently abandoned and empty. I, I went up there, don't see any place where anyone tore the dam apart. Nothing like that. I think the dam just started leaking so severely the pond is no longer full without the maintenance of the beavers. So downstream, the big beaver dam there now, that is going to stay. 
It's not affecting the road. It's illegal to remove a beaver dam. It's not affecting the road, although this is private logging company property. They can do whatever they want without a permit. doesn't matter what time of year. Morally, you'd want to do it in the summer so the beaver can leave or you can re, uh, relocate the beaver in a place where it could get established before winter. This time of year, you remove the beaver dam, it's going to definitely kill the beaver because of predators getting into their lodge. They can't repair it because of the ice. The ice will collapse down onto the pond bed when it's emptied and they store all their food below the water level sticks and stuff that they can chew the bark off so they never really have to leave the pond. Cold weather will not kill them. They do not hibernate but the predators coming in that's what will cause the issue in that time of year and usually they don't start hunting off the beavers until the summer. That's why there's such a huge issue in the spring because that's when there's babies and they they wouldn't be able to hunt them all off the parents because the babies would suffer from it. But on private property, those laws are right out the window, those environmental laws, because all you have to do as a landowner is consider it a pest, and that avoids the whole law of hunting season, hunting them off. Usually you have to wait until the summer months when the babies would be old enough to fend for themselves. But if you consider it a pest as a landowner, you don't have to follow those laws. But morally, I don't touch the beaver dams if it's a primary pond in the winter. If I can absolutely prove it's a secondary water storage pond and it's affecting the roadway, we'll unclog the culvert pipes. So today I'm driving my old vehicle, if you can tell. And it sucks on these roads. You gotta go really slow. It feels every little bump. It's not an off-road vehicle. It's amazing I dealt with this all these years because I, I remembered even last year doing this vehicle, being on these roads sometimes for 12 hours at a time. It makes your hands hurt, joints hurt from going over all these bumps. And I try to keep a good speed on these roads, which is harder with this vehicle. Sometimes we go to places that are literally 100 miles away from the pavement. And those are the times you got to go fast or you're going to waste an entire day getting out here. Last year I had to put actually more value into this vehicle than its blue book value is even worth in broken suspension. So what happened was the suspension didn't actually break. The bolt fell out holding one of the rear uh, shocks. And with the shock loose, banging around, it destroyed the subframe, which was very expensive to replace. That's what it was. The bolt fell out from the bumpy roads. So nothing actually broke, but it was damaged severely because of that. So the reason I'm driving this vehicle out here today is simply my work truck has a headlight issue that I have to get fixed by the dealer. They're going to do it for free because it's their fault, but um, I got pulled over by a cop a couple nights ago saying my low beams are way too high. It looks like the high beams are on, and I don't drive too much at night except the logging roads, so I didn't really notice it. I thought it was a problem when I got the vehicle, so I had them adjust the beam, and they said, oh, you're fine, and they gave me a paper. So because of that paper, I'm pretty sure that I can get the ticket dismissed. Or if I can't get it dismissed, I'll have the dealer pay for it since I have a paper proven they adjusted it and said it was fine in the spring. But it is clearly high when I look at the beam on the edges of the road. So I'm going to get that sorted out before I take that car out again. I don't know why the high beams would be so high or anything. I lifted it two inches, which should not have done that. I think it came from the factory a little messed up like that. So that's the reason why. Just avoiding that for now. But I think I have, I think when you have a violation like that, you got 30 days to fix it anyways. But I'm going to be doing a lot of nighttime driving on these roads and maybe not off-road, which is the problem. Today's update video is interesting, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.